Please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Avengers movie thoughts. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that people stayed and watched the post credit scene, and if not, don't you feel stupid now? Now, I'm hooked. I really hope, I, I do hope that they make a few more individual hero movies before setting up Avengers 2. You know, I mean, now you have, you know, now, now we know who the bad guys could be. I hope I pronounce his name right. It's Thanos, right? It's been a while since I read about him, but yeah, that... I'm hooked. I, I gotta see what he's, you know, because he still needs to, you know, make a plan or, you know, gather his forces, you know, something. So, you know, make a few individual movies, further the, you know, sort of their personal conflict, set up new conflicts. You know, now you've dealt with several of the, I really love that this has Tony, you know, sacrificing himself or potentially sacrificing himself. I did briefly wonder if they were really gonna go through with killing off the Golden Goose, as Obadiah puts it, but no, they couldn't quite do that, but they sure made me worry, that definitely. But yeah, you know, that you have that, you know, really too bad for Nick Fury that, excuse me, that he you know, I don't know, stop the wrong jet, or they sent two jets, or I guess if one nuke didn't cover it, I guess they figured the two would do, I don't know. Or maybe he just shot the wrong jet altogether, you know, he does only have one eye, he, you know, he might have bad peripheral vision as well. Anyway, he is... 999,999 out of a million, though. Anyway, you know, Tony grabs the, you know, nuke, flies up through the portal, chucks it at the, you know, or maybe it's just inertia, I don't remember exactly, but anyway, you know, and it just blows up and all the forces fall over, you know, and I guess a psychic connection, or maybe they were robotic or something, and not really explained, but it wasn't really necessary. We we got it, you know, and he falls back, and they're like, he's not responding, we gotta close it. And, you know, he just comes through, just, to, he's not slowing down. And you have that great moment of Thor swinging the hammer, because he's about to, you know, jet up and, you know, stop. Tony from just plummeting all the way down, and Hulk intercepts uh, Tony, you know, and then lands. You know, that you have that, you know, the two people who could save him. You know, the others can't fly. The two people who could save him both try to save him, and it's just that one gets to him faster than the other. You know, I really like that. The, the, you know, they, they are a team now. You know, that, and, and I love that when he wakes, I love how he wakes up. I love all the moments with the Hulk in this movie. Yeah, you know, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but he just like, Rah! and he's like, what, what, what? Oh, please tell me not one, none of you kissed me, you know? It's just brilliant. And, you know, that bit where it's like, the Hulk and Thor are on top of one of those flying things. Hulk breaks one of those shards off jams it down into the, like, back of it. Thor hammers it down into it with his hammer. It was lightning sparks. The cr they crash into a building. It's clearly dead. Phew. And Hulk is, like, smacking Thor away. You know, awesome. And I love how this really makes you feel just the sheer impact of Thor's hammer and Hulk's fist. You know, you got Thor's hammer... And, and I love that they actually, you know, someone must have died from a joygasm. 
right after writing the sentence, Thor, you know, <laughs> slams his hammer into Captain America's shield. You know, that just pure fangasm. That just, you, you, you know, oh, awesome moment. Awesome. You know, and the... Uh, I love how, you know, they actually, they get Loki. And then, excuse me, there's like, you know, thunder and lightning. And, excuse me, and, and that's, you know, right at that point, you just know exactly, excuse me, exactly what that means. And so does Loki. Excuse me, and no one else in the, you know, and I think, it's, excuse me, I think it's like Captain America, who's like, what? Are you afraid of a little thunder? You know, something like that. And he's like, I'm afraid of what comes after it, you know. And Thor just lands there and gets in. I think he like chucks someone out of the plane. Yeah, it's like Tony walks up to him in the armor, you know, like, and he just chucks him out or something like that. And he just grabs Loki and flies out. You know, awesome. And they had that, you know, talk. I really like their couple of talks. I really, really like how they stuck to that. You know, because that was excellent in Thor. How Loki never became this faceless, you know, bad guy who's just, you know, you can somewhat understand him. I mean, you, you don't like what he's doing, but you can see why he's doing it and still appreciate that he needs to be stopped. And he's not going to be the one to stop himself. He needs someone else to stop him. He is too proud. You know, that is his big downfall. You know, I know Tony describes him as a diva, you know, making all the people in Stuttgart, you know, not all people in Stuttgart, but obviously, you know, all the people at the party kneel before him. You know, you will bow down before me, and one day, your children. You know, and... The, you know, I, I don't know about, before I talk more about, I, I gotta say, I, I love how they, you know, you fear Loki, you really do feel like he is a formidable foe for them, you know that this needs the attention of the Avengers, you know, you need the team to stop him, and to stop the Arcturian Chihuahua invasion, you know. Well, with Arcturian, it doesn't matter which gender you... Yeah. With, you know, in spite of all the respect and awe that you do genuinely feel for Loki. And I love how you know, he uses his illusions perfectly, you know, tricking both Thor... You know, I love the... How, when are you ever not going to fall for this, you know? And... Coulson, you know, who's like, you know, even I don't know what this does. You know, he's just got the BFG in his hands, you know. This is awesome. You know, and he still fires off the shot at Loki, and he's like, oh, that's what it does. We really cared about him, by the way. I really, that was a really good moment to have, you know. It's like, it was a good decision to have him die, because we've seen him in several of the other movies, and... You know, as much as he can be sort of maybe a comedic kind of role, or he can be, you know, well, he, he was kind of the slimy CIA type guy in Thor, you know. We still somewhat care about him, and I like those little, you know, lines that sort of suggest you know, that he... He has a life. He's he's a person. There's there's something there you know, that you know. Pepper insists on calling him Phil, and then there's that bit of you know. Are you still seeing the cello player in you know in Portland? And you know how how are things going with that? And then Tony is talking with him on the the helicarrier, and he's like, ah, oh, you, you gotta take a flight to Portland. Don't let it you know go wrong. And then once he's dead, he's like, was he married? No, but I, I, there was a cello player in, in Portland. You know you have that. You, you got to care about him. I didn't see his death coming. I don't know, maybe I should have, but that really worked, and that really did have this sort of, you know, we need to band together, 
rise above our differences and make this work. You know, we need to actually work together so that, you know, not more people die. It, it got personal, sort of. It, you know, it became very... They, they couldn't distance themselves from it anymore, you know. But anyway, I do love how, with all the, you know, respect and awe that we feel for Loki, you can still have a scene like Hulk going up to... By the way, I love how the Hulk in this movie is like... He's, he's like part King Kong. He's got sort of a gorilla thing going. You know, I mean, he's like, you know, hammering his chest after uh, Tony, you know, wakes up there at the end. I thought they were going to leave him in a coma at the end of the movie or something. But anyway, you know, and my, my friend suggested that he may be iced up by flying, you know, all the way up there. I, I don't know, maybe, but yeah. Anyway. By the way, in the first Iron Man movie, He's, the, Jarvis has a line, and I really like Jarvis being in this as well, but anyway, Jarvis has a line about perhaps if you'd like to visit other planets, we should, you know, think about making some more, like, outer, outer coding, you know, more, more safe, something like that. In this, he kind of does visit another world, you know, so, yeah, I guess that was like, maybe they, they sort of set it up, even from back then. Anyway... But yeah, you, you, you know, have the Hulk going up to, you know, Loki, and he's like, you know, and, and Loki is like, I am sick of this, I demand respect, I am a god! And just, without you seeing, apparently Hulk got closer, and he like grabs him by his feet, and he just goes, Puny God, you know, that was just amazing. That was an excellent moment, you know, you just, everyone just lost it at that, just died laughing, you know. And yeah, that you know, you can have moments like that in there. That, that was really, I love when they truly are a team. I love, I gotta talk about the different phases of that last battle, the, the climax, you know. First, you have just a couple of them arriving in New York, at Manhattan, you know, getting towards the, you know, where, where it's all, you know, going down. And you have them sort of trying to get, get their bearings. They just need to get into the situation. They're, they're trying to help any way they can. And, you know, slowly but surely, all of them get there. I love the... Banner just arrives on this tiny little motorcycle. It's, it's what he could, you know, motorcycle. It's like a scooter. It's what he could find, you know. It was in the middle of nowhere. And just, nope, you didn't hurt anyone, but you sure did scare a lot of pigeons. Priceless. And that bit about, you know, how, you know, maybe it was intentional because you were awake when you landed. So maybe the Hulk did intentionally steered away from you, you know, and then you have that, you know, maybe there is some good to the Hulk. Maybe he does genuinely want to help people, you know, and then you have, and, and just the, the entire exchange with that guy, you know, the, are you a Martian, what, like, um, being from another planet? No. Then Mr. There's something wrong with you, you know, you, or you, you're, you've got some disease, something like that. It's just brilliant line. But anyway, you know, he gets there, and then they're like, you know, I know, yeah, I just got here, and I'm even worse. Actually, we could use something that's worse, you know, and then it's like, you know, can you turn? I never told you my secret. I can control it because I'm always angry, you know, and he just turns into the Hulk, rips the clothes, and just goes for the attack, and just smacks the fist right into the face of one of those things and it just you, you feel the force you know of that just amazing and you have that you know just but but yeah that you know so first they're they're trying to get their bearings they're trying to you know help out any way they can then the entire team gets together you have that shot that's also in the trailer that made everyone go nuts you know that's like you know all of them just standing there, you know, some of them getting ready, like, you know, Black Widow's, like, putting another clip into her gun, you've got, 
Hawkeye like drawing one of the arrows, you know, and just everyone's right. And you have that. I th I think it's Tony who just turns to Cap and he's like, "What are our orders?" You know, and that's just because he was the one who just you know would not take take orders at all and kind of you know contested the leadership. There, there's that line, I don't follow orders, you know, I'm, I don't follow others, kind of thing, and, you know, Captain America, and Captain America just immediately sees it, and again, it's like we saw in the Captain America movie, he is a leader and a soldier, you know, there is that, and, and he's just immediately, you know, he has the perfect, you know, Hawkeye, you, you're get good at getting it over you. Get up there, you know, keep track of the, you know, the, the strays and stuff like that. Tony, like, yeah, I don't remember all the orders, but just, you know, when he gets to, turns to, you know, the green thing. Hulk, smash. Brilliant, I love it, I freaking love it. And... He does. He smashes. You know, I love the bit where you see, like, this huge office building, and you see, like, to one side you have these, I think, the big flying things, you know, the huge flying things that kind of flying in towards the building, and they're like, ah, oh, crap, and then they're turning to the other side. But then there's a couple of people running towards the flying thing, because there's apparently something even worse the other side, and you see it's the Hulk, and he just bypasses all these people, because he's not out for them, and he just jumps on this, you know, huge thing. I quite like those, you know, gun things that can apparently also, like, stab, you know, things. The... I love the moment, again, a moment that, you know, where Loki, where they have some fun with him in spite of him being, you know, very imposing. The guy does a great job. I, I cannot remember the actor's name, but he does a fantastic fantastic job again, you know, but yeah, you have him, you know, with the, the scepter, he's like, in front of Tony, you know, and he's like, how will they have time to fight me when they'll be busy fighting you? This usually works. <laughs> I love it. I have no idea why it doesn't work, actually. I don't know, does, does he just hit the chest plate with the palladium or whatever? Or is this, yeah, anyway, you know, and... Tony has put on those, you know, right before he gets in there, you know, he's, you know, Jarvis is like, but, sir, we don't even know, the, the Mark 7 is not fully tested, and that's just, that's, you know, of course it's not, you know, because it's Tony Stark, it's Iron Man, so he's like, you know, okay, it's not fully tested, just, still, we're gonna use it, and he just goes in there, he takes off his armor, and he just, you know, telling him, yo, you wanna, you wanna drink? And yeah, I'm gonna get one. And he puts on those little wristbands, and you're like, there's something with those. I don't know what they're gonna do, but there's something with them. And he ends up being tossed out of the window by, you know, Loki. And he just, you know, activate Mark 7, and it just flies down there and puts itself onto him you know, wraps itself around him, and he doesn't even crash, and he doesn't even hurt the people down on the street, you know, just awesome. And I love when Captain America also, you know, you hear the cops talking about, well, oh, the army's, you know, really dragging their feet. And then Cap shows up, and he's like, okay, you know, you gotta get, there are people in there, they are, you know, they're gonna be goners if you don't get them into, like, the subway or something else, you gotta get them out of the way, because they're in, you know, there's gonna be the one of those big dragon things you're gonna fly straight at them or something. And you know, like one of the cops is like, wait, who who put you in charge? Why should we follow your orders? You know, and some of the soldiers show up, you know, the, the alien ones, and he just just destroys them. You know, and the guy's like, okay, so you know, we gotta do this. Yeah, awesome moment. I love the introduction to Black Widow. You know that she's sitting in this. You know, I mean, for one thing, she looks freaking hot. I mean, it's not the fact that she's tied down. It's not only the fact that she's tied down. It's just the, the she's, she's like all sweaty and she's got like a little bit of, not quite cleavage going on, but you know, and she's, it, what, what I also love about this movie is while several of the women are really sexy, they are not objectified. They are strong women. I mean, Agent Hill kicks serious ass. So does Black Widow. Pepper Potts, you know, 
Tony is not in charge of that relationship. There's some proper, you know, they, they bounce off each other, you know, and that, that worked really well. And that's, I think, why they're so great together, because both of them are strong and determined people, you know. They both have a certain, you know, willpower and, you know, ego, I guess, also. I, I suppose she has a bit of ego as well, especially him. But, yeah, you know, anyway, she, she, she's sitting there, she's got this, this incredibly sexy evening dress kind of thing. And, you know, and they're speaking Russian, you know, perfect. You know, you have this sort of spy setting, and she's been captured, you know. You have this sort of, I mean, it's right out of a spy movie, you know. I, I love how this blends the styles of the different movies so, so well, so seamlessly. But, but yeah, so you have, you know, and she's like, no, but, but I thought that, you, ah, ha, ha, you reveal how poor, you know, you reveal yourself by how old your intel is. It's really this that's good. And, you know, and then Coulson, like, calls and isn't, well, it, it's for her, you know, and it's like, okay, listen, three miles away, well, or a couple miles away, I don't remember. It said three kilometers in the in the subtitles, I don't remember. Anyway, close by we have an F-13 jet, something, and we can blow you, you know, blow you away before you get out of the building, so let me talk to Black Widow, you know, and it's like, and he gets up to her, and he's like, I'm working here, this guy's giving up everything, and the general is like, I'm not giving anything, <laughs> this is awesome, you know, just again, Hilarious, you know, and and at the end of it, she's like, "I'm gonna have to put you on hold." And you know, the like the general goes away, with, and she just kicks him, and she jumps. She does a roll whilst tied to the chair. You know, this is like Sydney Bristow awesome spy action kind of thing. You know, this is just wow. You know, and she gets out of it, and and like. I love how the scene sort of starts out with you, maybe, I don't know, I'd, I'd say the hardcore fans know that, you know, she's, she's not beaten. That's, you know, she's Black Widow, of course she's not beaten. But, you know, you kind of do get a sense that she's, you know, in peril. But then by the end of it, you know, you do get that, you know, she really was just, it, it was a mission, you know. That was what she had to do to get the intel. She had to get captured. So she got captured, you know. She was never in real danger there. And I quite like how she also... I, I like the duality of her scene with Loki. That it's... You know, she, she seems to be pleading almost almost like a prayer, you know, like he says, like a, a whiny little child praying to a god. And then by the end of it, still she seems to have, you know, she, she feels like she got some intel out of him, although she's a little quick to get away, so actually maybe that is also part of her having been actually hurt by what he said. I, yeah, I'd say there's definitely some truth to it, but there is that sort of, you know, with Black Widow, you never entirely know. Is she speaking the truth, or is, you know, is she actually bearing a nerve here, or is it a trick to get you to trust her, you know? And, yeah, you have that thing, but you do still feel like she might, you know, and, and she does bring it up with Hawkeye as well, and she has no, no reason to, you know, she's not manipulating him. So, yeah, she does genuinely feel bad about her past, and she does want to be able to... I love just the, the malevolence of Loki describing what he wants to do to, you know, Hawkeye and Black Widow, you know. And I like how she she solves the, you know, hypnosis thing, you know, cognitive correction. I banged your head against something. I love that after several hints that the Hulk is going to, you know, come out. You know, he does, and he does it at the worst possible time. You know, it's during the, you know, rescue attempt. But, but yeah, so you have these, you know, in the, in the first scene with him. You know, by the way, 
when she says to him that, you know, she thinks she can persuade him to come join them, half the guys in the audience are hoping that what she means by that is that she's going to seduce him. The other half are hoping that she's going to kick the crap out of him. And it's for the same reason that these two groups, that, yeah. The seeming snap of, you know, that when, when he's, you know, she says, you know, oh, it's just the two of us, there's, you know, he, he's like, oh, I'm sure the area's surrounded, you know, and I love how, you know, she, he got lured there, and the little girl just jumps out of a window, and he's like, ah, should have gotten paid up front, banner, and, and I love how he's actually helping people as well, you know, that he's not just hiding, he's being a doctor to people, you know, helping out, and, yeah, so you have, excuse me, you have him, you know, in there with Romanoff, and, you know, she's like, you know, okay, you can back down, you know, ah, uh, you said it was just the two of us, you know, and how she, he, she got the, the gun under the table just in case, you know, and, and how they made that 3D as well, so it's like she's pointing straight at you, you know, but yeah, you know, when he's like, stop lying to me, and you just think, oh crap, the Hulk, you know, and yeah, that was excellent, and then like, Tony, like, jabs him with a, I, th I guess, a screwdriver or something, like, jabs him in the side. And he's like, oh, and again, you're like, oh, and, and Captain America's like, what are you doing, you know, because Captain is kind of, he doesn't take unnecessary risks, but Tony does, you know, and the, by the way, I love the scene where, like, all their tensions are just rising with the, the scepter. The scepter seems to be, you know, making them, you know, more tense and, you know, sort of disrupting that and kind of... Anyway, so yeah, you know, and, and from when he finally does blow, it's, you know, when the helicarrier's under attack, excuse me, and he and... Black Widow, excuse me, are trapped in, excuse me, the helicarrier, and, excuse me, he could cause some serious damage to it. And by the way, I love when the helicarrier, you know, at first it just looks like an aircraft carrier, so I guess, you know, people who haven't watched, the, who haven't read the comics don't know what they're in for, and it just looks like, you know, wait, this is going to turn into a submarine, and it just lifts off, you know, and you just, yeah, that was awesome. But the entire jailbreak and, you know, that I'm not entirely clear on if it was Loki's plan to be captured and then rescued or if it was just that he had a plan in case that happened. You know, I'm not... 100% sure what he would gain by letting himself be captured. I guess he does cause some, you know, damage to the team morale with the scepter and all. And the, you know, breakout scene, you know, damages the helicarrier. And maybe they did think that they'd be able, excuse me to, you know, may maybe he underestimated them. That's an important thing to remember. Loki is smart, but he's also very proud, and he might make some mistakes. So, you know, because of his pride. And so it might have been a mistake to get caught, and it might have been a um, mistake to, you know, he might have actually expected that he could down the helicarrier. And they were close, you know, with this that special arrow of Hawkeye's. Yeah, that could really have, you know, I mean, that that was going to do it, but then, you know, Iron Man helped restart that engine and, you know, that whole thing, and so they did. And, yeah, I guess maybe Loki didn't expect that to happen, you know. He underestimated the heroes, their abilities and their determination. And I love how Tony, I would actually say... This has Iron Man in more peril than either of his full movies. You know, when he's about to be turned into shish kebab with the giant fan, and Captain America is, like, pinned down, and he's like, I'll get to the lever in a moment, you know. 
that was a really good, you know, bit. Now, the jailbreak... There was something else I wanted to say. I love how, you know, what, what Captain America does during the jailbreak is clearly, he, he was the only one who could do that, you know, you have him, you know, leaping, you know, over these areas. I love when he, like, kicks a grenade back or something, and he tosses one of the soldiers out from off the plane, you know, I don't know, I guess he just has a thing for tossing guys off planes, you know, in any age, and, you know, that he... You know, and, and when he, he's like, you know, he investigates S.H.I.E.L.D. by himself, and he, like, opens a locked door with his, you know, just brute force, with his strength. I love when he just grabs a, you know, what's it called, a boxing, you know. Anyway, you know, just takes it over his shoulder and just walks off, you know. And how he has, you know, he knocks one of them down, and then he turns around, and there's like eight more lying for him to just pick up and hang up because he just he wears them out, you know. That's how strong he is, you know. And he keeps himself fit because, yeah, that's that's him, that's Captain America, yeah. Especially in the movies, he just he works out and he doesn't really have anything. What is he going? To, I love the bet. I love that he, you know, he tells Nick, you know, you know. There's nothing else that's going to surprise me. And Nick Fury's like, I'll bet you ten dollars. You're on, you know. And then, you know, when the helicarrier lifts off, lifts off, he goes into the control room, and he just grabs this wad of bills, and he takes one ten, and there you go, Nick. Awesome. You know, it, it's it's so underplayed. It's so subtle. You know, I, that that's what makes some of the humor in this so great. It's so subtle. I mean, there might be people who don't even pick up on that, or like, didn't really, you know, complete, but it's just, it's so strong, but you know, if he had said, you were right, or like, you know, you are you won the bet, or something, it just, it's just this little, you know, they, they don't make a big deal out of it, that's why it works so well, you know. I love the, you know, when Hawkeye shoots the special arrow at Loki. You know, I was sitting there. When when Loki grabs it, I was sitting there. No. Hawkeye is smarter than that. There's there's a contingency plan, you know. Because he knows that Loki might grab it. So, yeah, it just blows up. And it's like, Loki, yep, yeah, well, tough. It's, you know, you're up against Hawkeye. It's, it's love that. And when he has, like, he doesn't have any arrows left. And he's not, like, helpless. He just uses his martial arts then. You know, and the martial arts fight between him and Black Widow was awesome. You know, and he grabs the last arrow he fired, which was basically a regular arrow. He puts a new, you know, thing on it. You know, I, I love the system for that as well, and how he has, like, a laser sight, and, you know, he has this thing that he can switch the, you know, s special arrows out with. That worked really well, I thought. That was very organic, I suppose. It, it felt natural and felt like it really existed, at least in this world, you know, which also has Asgardians and, you know, Hulk. So, you know, and we don't know what the arrow is, and he just, like, jumps o over the top of the building, you know, off the edge of the building. He turns around midair and fires it, and it's like this, you know, grappling hook, and he, you know, swings in through the window and into the building. You know, that was really nicely done. The... I, oh, and with Black Widow and the Hulk in the, you know, helicarrier, when Black Widow kind of gets knocked out, and then Thor goes in to stop the Hulk, you know, and you have that, you know, I love that the Hulk can't pick up, the, that he can't lift the hammer, no matter how hard he tries, and you know that he's extremely strong, you know, so you have that aspect, because that is really important, and, and also that there's that brief bit where Thor cannot draw the hammer to him once he, you know, 
lands from the, the helicarrier, you know, that he's like, you know, he needs to get back into, you know, you know, in, in touch with the heroism or you know, something. It, it just, it worked, I thought. I, I maybe can't quite put words to it, but, you know, and you have, but, but yeah, you know, the, the Hulk squaring off with Thor, just amazing, you know, really, really awesome fight. It just... And I like how the Hulk remains this sort of wild card that, well, not, I mean, not wild card, but he has this sort of unpredictable, by the way, I love the surprises in the film, but yeah, he has the, this unpredictable quality to him where he might actually hurt one of the fellow heroes, well, not hurt, but, you know, smack one of the fellow heroes, you know, that he suddenly just, you know, lunges his fist at Thor right after they work together to stop that, you know, huge dragon thing and, you know, stuff like that. That worked really well, I thought. I like that it's Black Widow who figures out that, you know, they need to do something more. That really fits with her character and it is really very much, you know, sort of her. It kind of, it's, it's not so much the others. You know, she is the type who would, in that situation, say, this is not, you know, going to... Like, the others, I'd say especially, I mean, I don't think, Hulk doesn't think about it at all. You know, Banner might, but... And Banner isn't a tactician. Thor? He just wants to fight. Iron Man? He's just gonna, you know, take out anything that comes at him. And Captain America? If there's a fight, he's gonna try to... Stand up to it. He's, you know, he's going to face that fight. And Hawkeye, also somewhat, you know, basically, he's going to take out the ones he can. But Black Widow, there is that thing of, you know, there's something, we, we need to actually stop this at its source because they're going to keep coming. And I also love how, in spite of that, it doesn't feel like, it. there is a risk that that might make the battle before that feel less important or less impactful and it doesn't because it shows them working together as a team it shows them utilizing their different talents and it has the sort of you know it, it has them saving a lot of people even it's not meaningless to take out the you know let's say they had focused all their power on just you know, finding a solution to... I mean, it also... They needed to get Loki away from the Scepter and from the... What's it called? The Star Stark Tower. You know, that would have really... Yeah, that... You know, if they hadn't done that first, then they would never have gotten the... You know... So... And if they had focused entirely on Loki and the portal they wouldn't have saved all those people that they did. And that's also, I, I really love how the film ends with these, you know, you have a lot of media coverage and some differing opinions, but you especially have this, you know, person saying, well, Captain America saved my life, so thank you. You know, wherever you are, thank you. And, you know, how, like, you know, people are, like, imitating the various heroes now. You know, that was really good. And getting their, you know, beard made to look like Iron Man's and, you know, stuff like that. But, but yeah, so you have the... Also, I love how, you know, the, the Selvig, I think, and still being played by Stellan Skarsgård, really excellent. I love the, the bit about, you know, you, we already know the character from Thor. And then, you know, Thor is, you know, he realizes that, you know, it's still Selvig, it, you know, that he's working with Loki, apparently. And Thor is like, I know him. He is a good man. And it just, you know, you, you kind of feel, yeah, you know, we, we know him, and he is a good man. So it's really, you know, and it's, it's not just like a throwaway line, because then you hear that, you know, Maybe I didn't know what I was doing, because I built an, you know, 
I, I had a contingency plan in case you know I, I made a, a turn off switch that you know I just we just need the separate and he's like I'm looking at you know I don't remember exactly what character says that but I, I think it's Black Widow and she goes in and you know is about to turn it off and the I guess one thing Loki might have been trying to accomplish by the capture and jailbreak is if, you know, it's, let's say the helicarrier did get downed, it would have made it much more difficult for them, if not impossible, to keep tracking the, you know, cube of power. I don't remember the name right off the top of my head. And, you know, with the, you know, gamma radiation thing, and, and yeah, in general, you know, if, if they did manage to stop the helicarrier, it would really slow down the heroes. I suppose that pretty well covers it. I gotta say, I love the bit where, like, all of them are talking, and there's, like, you know, it's, it's like Banner, who starts talking, you know, science-y stuff, and then Tony follows it up with something else, or so one of them says something science-y, then the other says something science-y, and Tony's like, finally, someone who speaks English, and Cap is like, is that what they were doing? And, you know, what's his name? You know, and, and then, like, I don't remember if there are any more lines between that and then this, but, you know, you have Nick Fury going off like, I want to know how Barton and Selvig got turned, got so easily turned into Loki's flying monkeys. And Thor is like, monkeys? I do not understand. And Cap is like, I do. I, I, I got that reference. You know, he's, he's like so proud. Because there's like, I'm not completely out of the loop. <laughs> you know, and, is, and he does. He does understand that reference. Because that movie came out like, what, 1933? So he saw that. You know, he, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, the... What's it called? And and the bit with, you know, Tony asks him to check out the, the relay, and he's like, okay, wh wh what do you got? What's the relay look like? It looks like it's running on electricity. Yeah, that sounds about right. And the, yeah, I, I love how they handled, you know, Cap being out of his, you know, time period kind of thing, I really am relieved that they didn't have, like, you know, what is this thing called internet, you know, all, the, all that kind of crap. That would just really have bogged it down, and we've seen it a million times, you know, but, oh, I do, I get that reference. That was funny, you know, and stuff like, you know, sure, uh, ban, you know, Hulk is dangerous, but Banner, you know, when he isn't the Green Rage monster, he's a regular Stephen Hawking. And Steve Rogers, like, uh, he's like a really smart guy, you know. And and the this ongoing thing of Phil wanting Cap to sign the trading cards. You know, I love how, I love these lines where you sort of hear only a little bit, but because of what you've already heard, you can put it together. Like when Phil, you know, when Pepper walks off with Phil into the elevator and she's like, so how's it going out with that? Are, are you still with that cello player, the one from Portland? And then when Tony is walking with Phil, you just briefly hear, well, you need to fly to Portland because you know what? Love, you know, is bigger than that. You know, something like that. And it's just like, you, you understand. You're not like, 
Where, what is he talking about? Because you, you put those two things together, the movie doesn't feel the need to coddle us. It's just, yeah, you know, here it is. Just, you know, if you pay attention, you're going to be able to follow it fine. And, you know, then you have the, you know, the, the trading cards. And, you know, for, first you have a couple of lines about that. And then Phil is standing, like, next to Cap, and he's like, you know, I have those in there, you know... And he, I don't think he even mentions, like, trading cards, or he doesn't say they're of you. Because he already said that. We're joining a conversation in progress. And he's just like, Ooh, they're like, they're a mint condition, you know. And he's just, he's just, he's a fanboy, you know. And Captain America was an icon, a hero, you know. So, yeah. And, well, Coulson, I, I guess when he was a child, is he old enough? I don't know exactly, but yeah, it was just... I love Nick Fury in the movie, you know, when he's like, you know, talking to Loki, you, yes, you have made me very desperate, and you're not going to be happy about how desperate you made me, you know, you, you might have made me more desperate than you would like to, excuse me, and the, I think it's Cap and Banner, who are like, talking about, you know, and it's like when they first meet or something like that, and Cap is like talking to, yeah, like, like saying to Banner, so they say that you're an expert on this gamma radiation, or they, they say that you're the exactly the right guy to find the Tesseract, that's what it's called, and, you know, Banner is like, yeah, that's true. Is that all they say? That's all I care about. You know, that was really gay. That, that, did I say gay? It was supposed to come out good. That was really great. Great or good, and then it turned, yeah. Because that, that just, that is, you know, in a nutshell, you know, that, that is Captain America. You know, the, it's just like, you know what? You have some good qualities. We could make use of those good qualities. You know that that's what we should focus on. You know he is, the, and and I love these little bits about. I mean, it could be really obnoxious because he'd be kind of a you know, party pooper. You know, Cap. He's he's a little bit. He's I mean, he is the Marvel Universe's Superman. You know, basically. I mean, he's not. He, not in the godlike powers department, but in the American symbol department. And yeah, he is kind of a boy scout. And that could be really, really boring and really annoying. But they play it right, you know? Yeah, he has a couple of lines where he's like, I don't think that's funny. But you can, you can appreciate it and you can, you know, I mean, when he's like chastising Tony for trying to provoke the Hulk out of Banner, yeah, dude, watch it, you know, I mean, and, and that's the thing, Tony does need someone, you know, checking on him, because Tony by himself is likely to get himself killed, or, you know, other people, you know, I mean, to remember his profession, you know, and then you have, but, but, but yeah, you know, so, they, they just, they play it right, they have the aspects of him. I, I, you know, I like when he's, like, you now when, when, I think it's Black Widow who's, like, warning him, you know, no, you know, he's about to get, you know, he's getting the shoot on, and, you know, about to jump after Thor and Iron Man, and she's like, no, 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 you don't understand, these guys are, like, basically gods, and he's like, ma'am, there's only one god, and he doesn't look, he doesn't dress like that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you know, because, that's Captain America, you know, he is a good Christian, he's a, you know, good average American, you know, and the bit about, you know, oh, we updated your costume, I helped a little bit with some creative inputs on the design, you know, Phil is just bursting with joy, and, you know, he's so proud that he got to redesign the Captain America costume, and, you know, I love the line, do you have a suit? Yeah, and suit up. But anyway, you know, the, the Captain America, you know, and he's like, don't, don't you think that the stars and stripes are a little too old-fashioned? And I don't know 
if it's Phil. It's one of the Shield people, at least, respond after what after what's about to happen or after what just happened. I think people need some old fashioned, so something old fashioned, you know, something like that. That was really good. I think that's about what I have to say about the movie, and that's good, because I can tell I'm losing my voice. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.